cool. Ha. Huh? Cool. Very cool. Um, I hit some hotkey for Canvas. Hope I didn't ruin anything. Uh, there we go. Um, I always like to show these VFX breakdowns because they're super dope. And uh, you get to see like a little bit of uh, like what makes what makes these uh, scenes, right? So essentially there's a bunch of, there's a, there's a large pipeline in 3D, right? And as an artist, you'll be in charge of just one part of that, right? You'll just be like, oh, like one little cog in a giant cool machine that does insane stuff. And you can see here, this is like the end result, right? Now this is pretty like, this might look like basic because you said, you know, like it's Avengers. Everyone's seen like some sort of superhero movie, you know, but there's a bunch going into this, right? This is like what they start with. There's no uh, raccoon even in the, in the plate at all, like the actual film, you know, that's big. but then they, they have this skeletal structure that they put in, right? And on that skeletal structure, boom, they put muscles on it, right? And then they put the mesh of the actual character on top of that. And then you have this cursed looking, <laughs> cursed looking raccoon skeleton here, you know? Uh, and they do the same thing, muscles. They do uh, all the clothes, all the fur and all the skin on top of it. So it's like, it's, that's, this is like super advanced stuff. We're not gonna be going near that, you know? But I just want you guys to know that there's a lot of stuff at play here. Um, a lot of artists put their time into this, and then you have an animator moving them around, you know, getting them to hit their their dialogue. It'll look like that on the bone level. <laughs> I did, I'm gonna say probably not because this is a uh, this is a bipedal, uh, this is like a bipedal sort of skeleton. So I'm sure if we analyzed it, this would be a, a lot more akin to a human than a uh, actual raccoon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's just it's just really amazing that we can do stuff like this because of just how much it takes to, to push it to that level. Um, and then you have like scenes like this. It's like none of this exists, right? And it's all fake. <laughs> and then the, so it's cool to see the the breakdown of that, like that they actually go through. They make the fake water, the the fake environment. You know, they get all the buildings in there. And then, yeah, they, they get them all rendered out. And then you'd be like, okay, this guy's just walking around in a suit. And you're like, wait a minute. This suit looks nothing like the, oh my God. They actually just made a fake suit. <laughs> and then it's, like, it's like, why don't they just get the, the, the actual prop department to, to make a suit? I'm guessing they didn't have the design figured out for the suit at this point. So they're like, now it's just doing 3D, you know, like so, so yeah, but yeah, it's just crazy, like what is what is possible at this point. So this is it's like, uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah, more going over it. Yeah, oh yeah. So you can see they had they had some sort of placeholder suit. Maybe they're like, eh, it's not cutting it. We need to upgrade these suits. But yeah, so yeah, 3D, super super wide usage of 3D in these movies. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, but 3D is not just for photorealistic superhero movies, boom, bang, you know, flying around and all that stuff. Uh, they're also used for uh, comic superhero movies where everything's flying around. Uh, this is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I don't know if y'all have seen it yet, but please, please do yourselves a favor and watch it it's like one of the it's one of the best like animated films ever uh like they do so much experimental stuff in this and yeah so spoilers if you haven't seen it but like just if you look at the rendering of this we're animation students of course we have hey carter i'm not i i'm not speaking for everyone you know i'm not making any ju judgments if you haven't seen it i swear <laughs> <laughs> How would you be? How would you be in this major? Yeah, hey, hey. Some people they they have different priorities, you know. Uh, but I would say please, please watch it. It's so good. Um, but like if you even look at the rendering, like they're not just using like regular shading on this stuff. Like they're they're actually going into the way that this is rendered and kind of applying this sort of stippling effect on on some of these objects. I'm sure that the zoom stream is really destroying the quality on this. But like, there's a lot of really unique stuff going on and they're kind of 
mimic that comic book style, right? A lot of cool stuff going on there. And you can even see in the animation itself, they're using a lower frame rate on the characters than uh, what we're nor uh, normally used to seeing. And it, it really helps sell that sort of like turning of a page effect with comic books, but also narratively it's used um, to show how comfortable these characters are with their powers and stuff. So it's just like, it's, it's so good, guys. Please watch it. Please watch it. There's just so much awesome stuff. And uh, I, I love it. You can just pause like any one of these frames and it just looks so good. It's just, oh, yeah. Please just, please watch this movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, beautiful stuff. Every, every part of the, the art department just killed it on this movie. But yeah, um, so there's that. There's, there's film as well. Um, I saw this movie four times in theaters and I'm just watching this scene again on YouTube. Maybe lose. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, I'm so pumped for the next one. I don't even know if there's like a trailer out, but like, I'm not watching that trailer. I need to, I need to see everything in the theater whenever it comes out, dude. I always, I always save, save it for, uh, for that when, when it's a really good movie. Um, also, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. There's, there's a bunch of other options for cool, cool styles, you know, like look at this thing, you know, it's like a very Ghibli inspired sort of art style. Right. But then if you look at it and it looks gorgeous, like look at this grass. Oh, that's so spicy. So spicy. And then look at, yeah, look at the geometry. You just have like this basic capsule looking thing. Uh, <laughs> then you have these like pulsating meatballs in the background uh, that then become these great clouds. And then once you pro apply some post processing, like, oh, oof, so good. <laughs> look at this little butterfly, you know? That's just like, three polygons just kind of uh, twitching around, you know, and then it flies away. And it's so good. It sells the effect because you look at the end product and you're like, oh, damn, dude. Hell yeah. So I, that, that's like a really cool thing that I've seen. Um, if, if And this is more like hand-painted sort of uh, effects on there. Um, and then there's also stuff like this because I work in, in video games, right? So uh, this is like, insane that this is 3d right like this you have this like gentle sort of movement on these like little shading lines and stuff and you have like a like this is like one of the most unique styles that i've seen and i really hope uh they make a game uh, like all in this style because that'd be so super so so dope I'll learn, I'd like to learn how to do that. Please, thank you. Um, yeah, they, I mean, he even goes into how it's made. <laughs> and this is a this is a sneak peek behind the uh, <laughs> behind the 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 curtain there. Um, but yeah, uh, like I even I don't know how to make this stuff like that. The, like I'd have to I'd have to dissect this and sort of spend some some days on it. Um, but it, it's little. It ends up looking so amazing, you know. Um, that's just some other stuff, but but yeah. So I just want you guys to know that like 3D isn't always like it's not always just what we think of just like this big blockbuster VFX movies, you know. Um, I he, he, in from the waiting room. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I want to make sure everyone's in here. Um, but yeah, so a bunch of cool stuff. A bunch of uh like i just want you guys to know that 3d is a big world and there's a lot of styles in it and they're all they can all be awesome you know so so yeah so that's just my little 3d spiel um and uh yeah uh i want you guys to know as well going into this that for every single like process that you saw let's do this every single like this process like every part of it like the, making this making this armor that you're about to see on there like rigging it and putting like a skeletal system in there um lighting it up like rendering it out texturing it like that's all these are all handled by different people right because we see this and we're like oh that's awesome and then we compare our own work to that and we're like, man it's not as good and it's like well one you're just learning 
it's like it's like you haven't picked up a pencil before and you're expected to uh, just paint the Sistine Chapel you know like that's not that's not going to happen and then also there's there's a uh, hundreds of people working on these films right so um so yeah I think you said yeah 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 no I I, I know that some people are going to be coming in and out of the class too at like 20 to 30 minute increments sometimes uh Aubrey messaged me about that there's like some other film stuff going on so so I understand that that there might be some some scrambling around uh but yeah just know that if you're if you're attending class and then you kind of miss out on some stuff you might come back and be like a little bit confused but uh, you can always read up on the uh the material afterwards um or look at, or look at my youtube videos as well um that like kind of back up all the information all right so um that's my little spiel about uh vfx 3d the, the pipeline um there's still a lot of stuff that we don't know about it right like that's what this class is for um but uh yeah any any questions about that for the time being any questions at all all right All right. So next up, y'all, uh, I, I sent this out in the email. Uh, if you haven't gotten on it yet, please download Autodesk Maya 2022. Um, get the student edition so we can not spend a bunch of money. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's basically the premier program for 3D stuff. Um, but there's just know there's loads of other 3D programs too that do similar things, uh, just in different ways, you know, like there's 3D, 3D Max, there's also uh, Blender. Blender is actually just commercially free, so you can make stuff on Blender for free and uh, sell that with no problem. Um, but Maya, you'd have to get like a license for that. So let's pop open Maya 2022. It's going to be a new, whole new uh, horizon in here. Um, keep in mind that uh, Maya is, uh, you know, it's, it, it'll, it's a pretty big program, so it's going to take, one, a little while to download, so please download it if, you're, if you haven't yet. Uh, while I go over this little, like, UI, you can just kind of follow along and sort of, uh, you know, figure out what's going on in there. Um, also, since there's going to be some hope, like there's going to be homework and you're going to be working outside of class on this stuff, um, you'll need a mouse that can middle click. So let me pull up my mouse here. Uh, you're going to need a mouse like with, with a scroll wheel that you can like click in and kind of get a middle click because that's one of the core functions of uh, Maya's camera movement is that you're able to uh, kind of uh, track around, dolly around with that, you know, so, so you're going to need a mouse that can middle click. Um, and yeah, you're also going to need that stylus, like I mentioned before, for ZBrush in the future. Uh, but yeah, so everyone pop open Maya. I'll give it, I'll give it a second. I'm going to get some water while y'all are opening up Maya. <clears throat> All right. So we've got Maya open. I'm going to close down all this stuff. Very nice. This way it's like, this way it's similar to your guys' layout. Um, I might need to shift some of these windows around though to, to see it. Some of us are worried about running Maya right now because we're on Max. Um, oh, don't worry about that. Maya's, Maya's pretty stable on Max. Um, yeah, it, it shouldn't cause you any problems. 
uh Maya's unless we unless we're doing like pretty advanced stuff in it um like Maya's not going to be it's not going to be super hard on your computer uh it's going to go it, it will be hard on your computer during rendering especially because it's like that's like the final step of the class and like the computer's just shooting millions of light rays in your scene and like rendering stuff out so it'll it'll get a little bit wild then um but just yeah it, it'll it should be fine because you can at that point we'll be in person so you can just render on the, the campus computers um also uh yeah uh i'll take this time because you just reminded me chloe that uh my uh, my autodesk is like corrupted or something on my laptop and i can't uninstall it or read out any laps so i can't use it right now oh my gosh uh weird uh try well, wait, it sounds like you already have Autodesk then. So you could potentially use whatever existing Maya that you have there or um, potentially. Sorry. So basically, uh, I don't know what happened, but I didn't think I was going to use it again. So then at some point, like a couple of semesters ago, I tried to, I like deleted Mudbox Maya off my computer and then I tried to uninstall Autodesk and then it like, did something really weird where it's like still on my computer and I can't get rid of it, but it says I don't have it. So I can't like, and I like can't redownload it or like redownload apps. I don't really know what's happening. <laughs> really? You can't redownload like the Autodesk, like kind of supervising app? Like, is that, is that it's, like? It's like my computer like thinks it has Autodesk, I guess. Cause like whenever I try to like uninstall Autodesk itself, it says that, like, oh, something went wrong. And I keep on getting like notifications that it needs to be updated, but I already tried to uninstall it. But whenever I try to like re-download it, it says like, I don't have it or that mm -hmm. I already do have it. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> but I do have access to DMAC usually. Yeah. Yeah, like you might you might have to work on campus for like the the, the homework then, unfortunately. But um, yeah, and, and you're on a you're on a PC, you said, not a Mac. Um, I'm on a I'm on a laptop. Uh, like what what operating system is it? Is it Windows or is it uh, iOS? Uh, it's Windows. Yeah. Okay. Um, weird. And you just went to like the uninstall like add remove programs. Little yeah, and like whenever I do that, it doesn't work weird you might have to go into the folder of where it's installed and, and like mm -hmm. see if there is like an uninstall program in there and then and then try it again but uh i reinstalled maya uh it's asking me to restart my computer would be okay yeah yeah absolutely um yeah let me know if, if you get put into that waiting room again and then uh i'll help you out uh, running maya on my home computer will turn it into a jet engine and we'll probably split. So I will be working on campus. That sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, let's uh, basically, yeah, first week is, isn't anything super intense. We're just going to be, I'm going to show you how to bring in primitive shapes. And um, is there a new version for 2022 or is it still 2020? Uh, use, I would use 2022 uh, because that's what is, on campus, though I think campus also has 2020 on it. So, you know, there's gonna be a lot of uh, interchangeability, but I'll, I'll be using 2022. So if you ever send me a file, then uh, it, it'll have to be either 2022 or previous, and then you'll have to open it back up on 2022 if I send it back to you, you know? So the, there, there can be some, some um, what is that? Backwards compatibility issues there, um, but yeah. So yeah, working on campus is completely fine. Uh, also, those computers are ripped, so uh, feel free to use those uh, whenever. Um, they're a fantastic resource. I wish I had that when I when I went to college. Uh, but yeah, fantastic stuff, y'all. Um, we're going to be taking a peek see at the interface in Maya, and then I'm going to show you guys how to create like a simple environment out of a bunch of primitives, and that'll be our first homework, right? So. Uh, not a, not a bunch of stuff to go over. Um, I am recording this, so I'll be uploading it again uh, on onto like YouTube or something, and then I'll I'll link it in the Discord, so you guys can review it at your leisure. Um, but yeah, so I'll just be going over the basic the basics of the Maya UI right now. Um, and I don't know a good spot to put this chat window in here. Yeah, sure, that looks good. 
Um, oh, there we go. Admit. Very nice. All right. So this is Maya. Ooh, delicious, delectable Maya. Look at, look, look at this. You got this really nice gray single tone UI. No one's bored, right, guys? Guys, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They, that, I'm, I'm assuming they picked gray because it's just easy on the eyes, you know. But uh, that means that we can just work longer in Maya, which is, which is great for me, you know. I'm, I'm all about. I'm, I'm just a fiend of, of the night, you know. So uh, up here in the top, if you see uh, this, these little menus up here, this is where most of your tools exist. Let me turn off this Zoom UI. There we go. Cool. Um, this is where most of our tools are gonna exist. And you'll see that we have just basic buttons for everything like file, you're gonna use this button to you know, load, save your scene. Um, this is where you can import other 3D objects directly into your scene. Um, you can export like singular objects or your entire scene uh, with this button as well. Um, and you can set up some, some project window stuff. I will go over that in a, in a little bit. Um, that might not even be, I might not even go over that this class. That'll be more for when we're doing bigger stuff, but, um, but yeah, so lots of basic file stuff here. I will say at this point in time, I'm going to, I'm going to say this all the time because I have to, because someone's going to get hit by it. Maya is not infallible. Maya, as we've seen with Zoe, just trying to install it, it's a very, fallible. <laughs> so um, something we need to do in here is do save scene as or increment and save and make new files of our like just duplicate files of our work every time we're saving, right? Because Maya is going to crash. Maya crashes a lot. Uh, Maya might have already crashed for someone in here, you know, so it's, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's handling a lot of information, a lot of complex math and stuff behind the scenes and then sometimes it'll just crash like that's what's going to happen so to prevent us from losing a bunch of work please increment and save your file like don't just don't just do control s you might have that hotkey like remembered from a different program but like dude sometimes if you're if you press control s maya can crash while it's saving and then corrupt that file and then you just you're just done. Like if you have your entire final on one file, you're just you're screwed. Like so so please do increment and save. I will say this uh, so frequently in the class. Um, please do that. Please increment and save. That way, if if it crashes and it corrupts the file, then you you only lose like fifteen minutes or something. You know? And yeah, you're gonna have like a lot of hard drive space that gets eaten up over time. But like. You can just work on a local hard drive that has big storage and then take like the, the last three files that you were working on and like copy that over, you know. Um, does that save it as a new version? Yeah, essentially it just like if I have this working file, if I do increment and save, it's gonna it's gonna save out a version of that file with a little with a little uh, suffix at the end of it. So it's gonna it would be instead of just being called untitled, it'd be untitled dot dot mb. Um, alternatively, if you don't like that, like how it saves like that, you can always do save scene as and just type in your own numbers afterwards. That's what I do. Um, but yeah. So boom, that's the file button. Guys, there's only like 80 more buttons to go through. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so what we're also going to look at is edit. Um, here you got undo, redo. Please don't use these buttons to do this. Please use the hotkey. Just learn control Z and control Y. It's going to serve you well because we're gonna have to undo and redo a lot of things, my friends. We're gonna have to undo and redo so many actions. Um, and uh, you also have some other options in here, like duplicate. This is basically uh, copying and pasting an object into the same scene. Um, whereas these cut, copy, and paste, we don't really use those. And I, I implore you guys not to use these because they they will they can potentially break your scene or not break your scene, but they'll make your scene really annoying. Because if you if you try to copy and paste a keyframe on like a rigged character, instead of just copying and pasting it in there, it'll copy and paste the entire character back in there with that key. And you see you have like two of the same character. You're like, what is this madness, Maya? Who, who did this to you? Why, why are you treating us like this? So, uh, so avoid these buttons. Um, and yeah, I, I have a handout on 
uh, canvas that has all these little hotkeys of so the ones that we're going to use. Every time I try and press something, it makes a little beep and doesn't do anything. What? What? <laughs> what, what kind of? I have no idea. I was able to save it the first time, and then now it's like it's like it's frozen, but it just like makes a little like boop boop. Like every time that I touch anywhere on the screen, but it's what? not responding. Oh, are you using your stylus? Yeah. Try clicking around on with a mouse. See if that gives different results, or if it still does um, the beeps. No, nope. same thing. Same beeps. Um, yeah. Is it like a? Is it like? What what kind of beep is it? Like, because Maya doesn't make know. noises by default. It's just a little beep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait. What buttons are you clicking on specifically? like anything I just tried to like look through the file again because I like saved oh, yeah. it and then I was trying to save it to a specific spot and like so yeah I can't do anything I oh. can't even make the screen smaller wait so you tried to you tried to save to a different spot like yeah that's your... what I was gonna do but I can't click on file because I'm all right so so essentially I'm thinking that you have this save as window somewhere off of your screen or like in a corner somewhere. Oh. Because now I can't click on anything and it's going like right. boom, 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 boom. That's know? smart. Um, yes, thank you. Nice. That's awesome. it. All right. Heck yeah. I was thank like, you. my head doesn't make beeps. <laughs> yeah. What is <laughs> Thank you. They've implemented new horn feature in Maya uh, to yeah. make beeps constantly. <laughs> um, no, that, that that's great. We got it. We got it figured out. I'm liking it. Um, but yeah, under the edit menu, there's like some uh, kind of copy paste stuff. Um, also, some grouping stuff that we'll talk about in parenting. Um, that'll be that'll be for later though. We don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, and then the create menu. I'd like everyone to open up this create menu. Ho oh, ho! Very nice. We're about to create things, y'all. Um, what we're going to be working with primarily in here is not NURBS, not volume. Don't do either of these primitives. Um, they're going to be much different. We're going to be messing around with polygons. Ooh, the, the, it's like the most basic 3D object, essentially. Um, polygon primitives right here. And I'd like everyone to make a cube. Boom. Also, before you click on cube, or if you, if you did, just control Z it and go back uh, here. Uh, make sure that interactive creation's off because interactive creation is kind of like weird. Like what it does is if you create a cube, it's like drag on the, drag on the base of the grid and then pull up for height. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, you know, but then it's not precise at all. So now this cube is not like, it's not a dead center in the world. It's not like, it, it's not it doesn't have proper like scale or anything so so i usually avoid that i turn it off you know and then i just do create cube and then you get a nice little nice little one by one cube right there beautiful so that's cool it's very dope um and let's go to uh let's go further on these menus uh this create menu is also where we do lights and cameras in the future. Um, curves, if you need it, like you can put a camera on a curve and then it will kind of follow that specifically if you have to do like a really specific animation. So um, we, we probably will not uh, worry about that. And then we have some like type and then a uh, little sweet mesh thing. It's like kind of making a polygon like this on a curve. So it'll, it'll be swoopy and stuff, but there's other ways we can do that. Um, but yeah, so that's the create menu. Uh, select, I honestly don't really use this menu very much. Um, if anything, it's, it's primarily like deselect all, alt D. That's just how you, that's the hot key for it. So if you're selecting something, you're like I just don't want to be selecting anything anymore. Just press alt D, boom, that'll be, you won't, you won't have anything there. Uh, basically grow and shrink are the other, um, are the other options here. Um, but yeah. Pretty much everything else is is not. I don't really use that uh, that much in here. Um, the modify menu we're going to be using freeze transforms and stuff. That'll be later when we're like talking about rigging and stuff. 
primarily. Uh, though pivot, center pivot is, is pretty important to know about. Like if, if you're looking right here, I have my little mover in the middle. I know you guys don't have it on your side because you're probably in a different tool. But if this ever gets like offset, and you're like, man, why is this? Why is this pivot point all the way over here? You can just go to modify center pivot boom. There you go. Um, but yeah, there's some other snapping and aligning stuff here. Nothing that we really have to worry about right now. Um, but yeah, and then there's display. Display is going to have like your your options for all of your UI elements in here. So if you don't like this grid, you can just turn it off, boom. Or you can customize it with this little option box right here. So let me give it some, some interesting options. Uh, you can also uh, just tell it to hide, show anything in here, though I usually like to use this show tab in here. It accomplishes it for this, this view uh, only. Um, and yeah, there's some other helpful stuff in here, but again, it's just more buttons that we don't need to worry about here. Like we, we've, we've streamlined this. We don't need to worry about these. Uh, now Windows, I do recommend that everyone go into the, the Windows category. Let me close this thing. Uh, go into Windows and open up an outliner. Boom. And outliner is really handy to just keep around. You'll see that I, I usually just push it into like a, a side of my UI over here. And uh, it basically shows you a breakdown of your scene and every object inside of it. So I, I can see that I have like a cube in here right now. Uh, and that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, so now uh, we're going into after Windows, you'll see that you have mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, mesh display. And all, all these buttons afterwards become different depending on what menu set you're looking at, right? So we're in the modeling menu set. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because they broke it up into how like you would have a different career. Like there's modelers, you know? And then there's rigging people that do like tech art stuff. They're the people that make the skeletal structures, make all that, like the, the characters able to be posed. Then there's animation, which is me, like the people that just take those rigs and then animate them, pose them around, move them around. Uh, then there's FX, like that's like simulations and stuff. Like if you're doing cloth sims, like that's a whole other department. So if you, if you really want a career doing like cloth sim stuff, then you could do it for sure. Uh, and then rendering, this is like if for it, your, all your lighting and, and rendering needs to get that final image uh, ready for, uh, you know, editing in like a video editing program. Um, there you go. So all these buttons will, will swap out after Windows. Like these ones will stay the same, but everything else will swap out, you know. But we're going to stay in modeling zone for quite some time. So go into modeling and, yeah, this is what we're looking for here. So uh, I'm not going to talk about these buttons because they're going to be they're going to be changing, and we're not going to be needing a bunch of them. Like there, there's a, a bunch of tools in here. So if you're running into some sort of problem, you might find that that this has the solution in here somewhere, like in Edit Mesh or Mesh or Mesh Tools, you know. Um, but essentially, what we're going to use is uh, our modeling toolkit over here, and it should be on the right hand side of the screen. There'll be a little tiny tab that says modeling toolkit. Uh, so be sure to have that open. If you can't find it, you can always find it under mesh tools, hide modeling toolkit, oh, or show modeling toolkit if it's not there. And yeah, so that's, that's, that's all uh, awesome. Very good stuff. So to so keep this panel open, we're going to be using it in a little bit. Um, or just know that this panel exists there because I, mean, I want to show you guys a little bit about all these other ones as we're going through our tools. Um, so right under all those menus, we have just some other little uh, easy buttons to like do undo. Again, I don't recommend clicking these buttons because you can just do control Z, just have your hand in that area for control Z on your keyboard. And yeah, you'll be you'll be set. You can also save there. But as I said, I recommend increment and save. It's just going to create more files. That way we don't uh, ever lose our work when it crashes and corrupts something. Um, and then we have some other buttons. You might not have those ones visible, but these ones are like for snapping stuff. So eventually when you start moving stuff around, it's going to be, if you have like the snap to grid button highlighted, it'll just snap to all these, you know? Um, and then there, there's more snapping functions in there. We will go into that more next week, not so much this week. Um, 
and then yeah there's also um a live surface so if you if you create if you make a, a surface live then you can't select it but now anything you move will be on that surface like just stuck to it you know so yeah that's all of your snapping all your snapping needs right there uh, and then we also have some rendering buttons uh, we're going to be not using these buttons as much we're probably just going to be using the arnold tab right here and then uh going into like the, the rendering and render render settings but that's in the future when we actually get to that part you know uh nothing to worry about right now now uh under that you have your shelves so for whatever you're doing if we're, we're going to be doing poly modeling so it'd be it'd be wise to keep your poly modeling tab open here but they have curves and surfaces sculpting now sculpting is not really it's not really advanced enough for what we need sculpting for so we're going to be using um we're going to be using zbrush for sculpting that'll be in a couple classes though uh then rigging animation rendering effects you know like so they just have they just have so many different um so many different uh shelves in here and they, they're, they're essentially just these these buttons up here but just like made visible at all times, uh, you know, and then you might, you might see that there's like some functions that are left out of this. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah. All right. So let's talk about camera and moving around the scene. Right. So we made a cube. If you don't remember how to make a cube, it's just something that's create menu polygon primitive cube. And let's talk about camera controls. So at this point, this is when we're going to need that mouse middle click to come in uh you we can get around it a little bit but it's very inefficient and it's a huge time sink i recommend just if you don't have a mouse just buy like a nine dollar one off amazon like you don't uh we don't we don't need to be splurging on like the top tier mice you know we can just keep it simple um but essentially all your camera controls are on the alt button uh, and your, your mouse buttons. So I'm holding down alt. And then if I hold down left click, it's just going to rotate that cube around. I believe on Mac, I think it's command and the same thing. So I think it's command left click, and that's going to orbit this camera around wherever it's focused on. So get used to alt left click or command left click, like try to try to rotate that camera around, right? I want you guys to get super used to, to doing that. Uh, it's option on a Mac. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have a, I've never really used Maya on a Mac, so. <laughs> so if I ever say Alt, it's most likely option instead on, on a Mac. Um, I, think, I think the hotkeys are pretty interchangeable that way. At, at least that's what uh, past students have told me. Uh, but yeah, so option and left click. Now to kind of zoom in and out, you can scroll. So you can scroll in and out. And that's just a nice, easy zoom function. You can also hold alt and hold right click and it'll kind of dolly in and out of your scene that way, right? So it'll move that camera around there. So get used to that because it, it's it's enormously important that we figure out how this camera works because we're going to be spending a lot of time just staring at our our three D stuff. You know, we have to refine these shapes and stuff eventually. Uh, now to to sort of uh, track left and right. Sorry, my, my whenever I'm recording on Zoom, it like kind of freezes up my computer every once in a while, so you'll see that. Uh, but if you press all, if you, if you hold alt or option on Mac and middle click drag. So I'm, I'm holding down alt and middle click right now and I'm just moving that mouse around. I can track around my scene. So it's really important that you guys get good at sort of navigating your scenes like this. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have a mouse right now, uh, you can also use your F key on, on the keyboard. So if you select an object and press F, boom, it's gonna focus on that. And then you can kind of like rotate around it. It's not the best because eventually you'll be like modeling a character and you'll need to like rotate the camera like underneath and like 
look at the soles of the shoes and stuff and you'll need to like zoom in and kind of inspect each like inch of that character you know so please uh get get a mouse that you can use for that um if you don't have one and yeah but also yeah you just can press you can press f if you have something selected you can also use your outliner to select stuff and then press f and it'll bring the it'll bring the the camera over there and if you have nothing selected and you press f it's going to kind of zoom the camera out to to show all of your your objects in the scene see how it kind of got both of those um so yeah great stuff there any questions on uh camera or any of the menu sets that we went over All righty. Fantastic. Yeah, let, let, don't feel uh, bad to ask any questions. I answer questions all the time. It's literally my job. So uh, <laughs> please don't don't uh, hold back on the questions. I'm, I'm down to answer anything. Um, but yeah, so that's fantastic. Uh, I feel I may need a few refreshers on this when we start again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, essentially, I'm kind of throwing a bunch of extra information at you guys right now, uh, and then you'll you'll need just parts of it, you know. Um, but like, I, I do want you guys to kind of catalog in the back of your mind like what's possible. That way, you know when things are kind of uh, easily done or not, you know. Um, but yeah, so there we go. We have those menus and camera stuff set up. Now let's talk about moving these cubes around. Let's get some movement in here, y'all. So if you left click a cube, boom, it selects it. If you click off into the negative space of your scene, it deselects it. Uh, if your entire screen is cube and you need to keep this camera angle for some reason, but you want to deselect, remember it's Alt D. Boom. that's gonna that's gonna deselect it right and you can also do you can click where there's no like cube in your outliner as well so there's lots of options here um but yeah so with that cube selected your screen probably looks like this boom your screen probably looks like this you might not have the poly count up here i just keep this to uh because i'm i work on video games where you need to keep a pretty low poly count on stuff um but you guys don't probably don't need to worry about that for now um and instead up here i want you to look at this like left side so these are your main tools these top three are just kind of uh selection tools right here so if you press q boom that's going to make it uh it's going to be uh, be using this this little pointer tool up here so if i press q watch how maya highlights it boom Whew. so now i can select things um, though, keep in mind, I rarely use Q at all. I just use move instead, and I can still select things with that move tool. I just get that added little uh, manipulator in there, right? Um, so there's that select tool. And, oh, I'm sorry, my neighbors are doing some, some loud stuff upstairs. Uh, so we have Q, we have W, boom. And if you press W, you're going to get this manipulator if you have it selected. Notice how if I don't have it selected, it's not going to be there. But this, this little manipulator right here is very important, right? I press space, and I don't know how to undo what it's done. <laughs> so if you press space, that's going to bring you into a four panel view, most likely. Uh, to restore that, just go into one of these panels, like, like bring your cursor over it, and then press space again. And then it should bring you back into that view. Um, let me know if it doesn't. If it doesn't, or if you're in a different view entirely, you can always press this four view right here or single perspective view. You know, so that'll 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 do the same thing there. Yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, back to uh, W, which is our move tool. Uh, it's it's very important. It's how we do a lot of our just kind of manipulating of scenes. 
like when I'm animating, I'm using pretty much just the move and the rotate tool entirely. Like that's, that's pretty much it. You know, um, I set some keys, I move and I rotate stuff and, you know, I make a whole, whole scene out of it, you know? So move, you'll notice if you press W, sorry, my computer's lagging again. Uh, it has these like this little three prong thing, right? Now this is called a manipulator. And this is how we can move objects around in our scene. So if you like bring your cursor over some of these little icons here, notice how they highlight. And also notice how they're color, color coded. You have blue, that's gonna be tying to our Z axis, right? It's gonna be depth. Usually when we're modeling characters, they're facing forward on Z axis. Uh, you also have red. Um, how do you select the whole cube versus a side of it? Um, we're going to get more into that later, but I'm suspecting that you might have, uh, you might be in a different selection mode. So hold right click and go to object right there. You get getting a little, getting a little ahead of us, Ella, but that's fine. I always like experimentation. Uh, but yeah, so hold right click and then make sure you're in object mode and then you can click on that cube again and it should, it should just be selecting that whole object of that cube. Nice, awesome. Um, so back onto these axes, you have blue for forward and backward, like in depth. You have red for left and right. That's our X axis. And then we've gone over Z and X right there. And then we also have Y axis up and down. That's this last one. And I, I forget every semester what color this manipulator is because I'm very colorblind. So I think it's a either green or yellow, but that's it's this up and down one, you know. So just just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, there you go. And you'll also notice that they have these other squares, and these squares are are pretty dope because, like, say you want to move something along the blue and the red at the same time, but you want to keep it on the same level on Y, you can just grab this square right there and boom, you can, it's just going straight along that surface. Like if I make a plane in here and I make that big and then I, I want it to just stay at that level on there and just kind of shift around, you can just see that it's, it's, it's conserving that. So, so become familiar with your, your little, uh, your different axes of your move tool and just get, be comfortable moving stuff around. Um, all right, all right. So next up is rotate, boom. So if you press E, so we've gone over Q, that's select, W is move, and then E is rotate. So if you go into your rotate tool, you can just click anywhere on this sort of sphere and it will rotate, to, it'll start dragging that cube around. Um, but if you look at these different color-coded bands, that's your different axes. So if you want it to only rotate on one specific axis, then uh, you can definitely do that. Like if you're doing like a front flip, you'd only, you'd only want to rotate on uh, the red axis, right? So that's how you kind of solo that out. Um, if you're doing some sort of little like roll across the ground, you might be using blue. If you're doing a pirouette, you might be using the, uh, the, the, the uh, Y axis for that, that Y axis right there. So keep that in mind. So that's rotate, fantastic tool, fantastic tool. And there's also scale. So scale, if you press R, boom, you can scale that, this bad boy up and down any, any direction that you want, as long as it's aligned with these axes, you know. Uh, and then similar to move, you can also scale along two axes at the same time. So if I want this to be um, just like wider, let's go back to default, there we go. If I just want this to be wider, boom, but like the, the same the same height, you know, I can just scale on this little, little square between the red and the blue, and it will scale on both of those at the same time. What hotkey was this? I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Um, it's R. So we have Q is select. And then W is move, E, and R. So it's just the Q, W, E, R 
at the at the top left of your keyboard. Very nice uh, hotkeys. They're they're pretty easily accessible. Oh, sweet, the whole lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you'll you'll see that my as I'm going through them, it's highlighting the buttons that correspond to them over here. So, so yeah. All right, and then uh, so that's it for for these. We'll get we'll get more into like the lasso and and stuff. Like honestly, I only use those for specific uh, specific cases when just like regular selection won't do it, you know. Um, but yeah, our regular select tool is going to handle pretty much ninety percent of uh, everything. How do you go back to the default size? Oh, that is uh, I just did undo. I just spammed control Z a bunch until it went back to one by one by one. But say you don't want to do that. Boom. It's like, let's scale this into oblivion, like some, some crazy, some crazy size, you know? Um, and then if you look over at your channel box on the right hand side over here, you can click up, uh, click that channel box and then you can go into the scale values and you can just type in one directly. Boom. See that? Um, you can just press enter after you type it in and it will accept that new value that you type in there. And you can, you know, you can do the same with any of these translations, you know, like if I do, if I wanted at three on Y and I wanted at seven on Z, you know, like that's, that's completely possible, you know. Uh, and then if you wanted it to be back in to its default position, you just type zero into those boxes and then press enter. So yeah. So that's how you can restore it back to its, its defaults. Everything defaults to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, 1, 1 for scale. Like if it's like a one to one scale with itself, right? With like the real world units, you know? So just be cognizant of that. And then next up on this little left line, uh, like these are all like the fun tools over here. And then uh, we have some camera tools down here as well. Uh, essentially, if you press space, you can see that you'll go into this multi-camera view. Uh, this button also achieves that. So you can click between these. Um, if you want a different view, like one of these orthographic views, uh, feel free, feel free to use it. Just click in there and press space. And then you'll notice that it's, it's a little bit different. And it's pretty, it, it's pretty cool because essentially perspective doesn't exist in this view at all. Uh, so if I like duplicate this cube, uh, you would expect that since we're, since that camera view is looking from over here, you know, like this is, it's looking from over there. You would expect that if I went into this view and started to slide this back, you would think that that cube would shrink down, right? But this is in a world where perspective doesn't exist. So it's really good if you're like checking the silhouette of something, um, because this cube is like super far away from this other cube, but you wouldn't be able to tell. But it's really, really good at just like checking the dimensions of like a face, you know, and making sure that everything checks out there. Uh, but be warned, things will look a little bit different in this view. Uh, it's, it's essentially like if you've ever taken a picture of a face with like, like a really small lens and then a gigantic lens. This is a, the, the bottom one is essentially if you're taking a picture with a lens that's like the size of infinity, you know, so uh, that's why everything's just, there's like not much perspective on it, you know. So, so yeah, it's all planar. It's called orthographic. Uh, if you're interested in the terminology, um, but yeah, so that that's all the tools right there. Very cool. Uh, I want to direct you guys' attention over. We we kind of jumped the gun, but I wanted to answer the question as it came up of how do you restore it to its default values, um, or like anything in here's default values. And uh, the, the way we do that is the channel box. So this channel box, anytime you have a, an object, this channel box keeps track of the transform values, transform values. Like that's I'm not talking about like the movie transformers. It's just like everything in Maya has a transform node on it, which basically keeps track of like where it's moving, where it's rotating and where it's scaling, right? And you can see that now that I've moved all of those uh, my trans my transform values have have you know updated accordingly, and you can see that they're updating in real time as I start rotating these these guys around. Um, so yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, you'll get much more familiar with these when we start animating. 
uh, towards the end of the semester because the animation is it's basically just moving these values around at all times like that that's that's essentially what animation boils down to once we get a rig into 3d space um but yeah so there we go there we go um that is that and uh so that's what the channel box is for it's fantastic for that it also has a display uh layer section down here and on your display layers you can kind of organize your scene like say you have Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit. So you have like a bunch of cubes in here and it's like a bunch of background elements or something. And you you like them, but they're also like kind of invasive for when you're like crafting your scene, you know? Um, and you just want to like reduce the clutter. What you can do is select all those background elements and I'm just drag selecting them, left click dragging over them. And then if you look all right, right here in your display layers, you can click this button that says create a new layer and assign selected objects. Boom, you can do that. And then if you press V, it'll turn on and off all those objects, you know. So that's what display layers are for. It's basically scene organization. You'll see that uh, a lot of people utilize those to kind of uh, simplify their views and make it a little bit more accessible, you know, for when we're working on, on uh, a scene. Yes, yeah, so that's what that's for. Uh, there's some other stuff you can do. You can make it like reference so you can no longer select them, which is really cool. Uh, though I have the, the situations in which we do that, I'm going to show you a different tool for that. Um, but yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so that's basic, the, the basic tools. Um, try bringing in some, some interesting shapes, y'all. Try, try bringing in some shapes, like bring in like a sphere and kind of move that around, start scaling it up, scale it out, get, get used to creating these primitives. Get used to also pressing control D and moving it around. Because if you, if you press control D, it's going to duplicate whatever object you have selected, and then you'll be able to move that around your scene. Is the grid a base for what's part of the model you'll see, if that makes sense? Like if the model goes through the bottom of the grid, will that part be cut out of the final render? No, not if your camera is lower than the grid as well. But this, uh, what this grid is essentially is kind of a way of keeping us aware of where our origin point is in the world. So the reason that matters is that if you have a character that is like super far off the grid over this direction, uh, and then you export it to like another program, it'll be offset by that much from origin, you know, because you have like a, you have like a transform value of negative 24, you know, so it, that that's pretty much just for um, kind of cleanliness when we're making a when we're making models, we usually model them at origin. And then uh, we'll have that asset as its own file somewhere and then we'll like import that into uh, an animation scene and then kind of place it around, you know. And then in that animated scene, we'll we'll kind of organize it how we want to. Uh, so is it if, kind of like a digital canvas? Oh, sorry. Is, no, go, is it sort of like a canvas? I'm like, you know, when you're drawing and like you put something way like to the side of one area, and then if you like export, it doesn't export just like that part that's been drawn on. Like it'll show all the blank parts too. Is it kind of like that? Yeah, it'll it'll keep it'll maintain that space uh in whatever program you bring it into you know like it, it'll, it'll okay. keep track of that it, it has that offset um but also keep in mind that this is at a different scale like i believe my defaults to this being centimeters as a working mm -hmm. unit you know so this is like this cube is like one centimeter which is like pretty tiny like a, a centimeter is smaller than an inch so it's like it's just really we're working at like a kind of a tinier scale here um okay. so yeah Noise, noise. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, all right. So you guys now know um, some basics of this Maya user interface. Down here, we also have like a timeline, but we're not gonna we're not gonna even touch that until uh, animation time, uh, which is which is in a little while. So so yeah, you can just scrub time on there, but it doesn't for now. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, but yeah. So let's look at, I was mentioning that, oh, is there any questions about, 
that stuff before I move on. I don't, I don't want to leave anyone uh, confused, you know. Yeah, um, could you repeat how you grouped certain objects and then hid them and showed them again? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, to get a bunch of objects, I just made some primitives and then I clicked, I, I drag selected over them and then graph timeline view is superior. Zach, Zach knows, Zach's flexing the, the Maya knowledge. Um, but yeah, so I just duplicated them with Control D, and then I'm moving them with W, you know. So that's just how I populated them around really quick. And then I drag selected over them again. And then I went to my channel box slash layer editor. And then down here is where I, I did create a new layer and assign select objects. If you have an existing layer, you can just click that and then right click. Uh, and do add selected objects. So you can get those onto a layer, but I like to click this button if, I, if I'm making a new layer and it just adds it immediately to, that, uh, to uh, whatever I had selected, you know. Uh, the spacebar pulls up a very intimidating menu. <laughs> just the thought I had. <laughs> uh, Vanessa's correct. If you press spacebar, you get this massive menu that you're just like, why? why? what um but essentially what it is is all of these up here right and it also has all of the other menu sets in here as well oh sorry about that uh, it has like all of these menu buttons in here too it's just a, a faster way so if you can get used to the chaos that is this then it's a faster way to, to use certain buttons um but there's also there's just there's all there's gonna be extra buttons all the time in this program but i don't wanna, i don't want to throw all of them at you immediately no um but let's talk about polygons y'all let's talk about polygons because i want you guys we're almost to the end of the lecture i just have to introduce a few more actual tools to you and then we can uh i can send you on your way with your homework um Essentially, what the homework is going to be is using little polygonal primitives and creating a little scene, right? And it's going to be manipulating the, these cubes, uh, whatever cylinders, whatever you're, you're putting in there uh, to make the scene. And I want to see I want to see you guys use a few tools. And these tools exist in the modeling toolkit. So make get that open, and then we will talk about. We need to talk about anatomy, right? Now, we're not talking about human anatomy at all. We're talking about cube anatomy, right? So this cube has a very specific sort of um, setup on it, right? Uh, it has one, two, three, four faces on the side, and then one, two on the top and bottom. So it's six faces. And what's comprising this, this object is essentially just points in space called vertices or singular vertex. So if I hold right click and go to vertex, boom. So everyone create a cube if you haven't, you can just click this little cube guy right here, uh, create a cube. And then you can select these vertices now. If you hold right click and then go to vertex mode, you can click on these vertices, boom. And that's, that's riveting, I know, I know. Uh, but you can also move those verts now. So you can move those directly in the program. And you can also scale them, right? You can select a bunch by drag selecting and then rotate them, you know? So you can see that we're getting some more advanced shapes now, right? It's not just a cube anymore. It's uh, it's like a one of those cartoon weights that's like twenty tons, you know. Um, it's it's a it's a kind of dilapidated box, you know. It's a it's a uh, pizza box now, you know. So we're getting some more different shapes in there. And that's a that's what the vertexes or vertices are. 
right here, right? They're just points in space that are keeping track of something. I missed it. How do we edit the vertices? So you uh, you hold right click, and then you'll see a bunch of different options in here. You're going to be going to vertex mode, and so you can select these verts. And I want to talk about selecting before we go over the other components of a cube. Um, so basically, if you left click on a on a vert. You can hold shift and then you can add to that selection, right? So now I have all those, all these verts selected and I can move those around with my W tool. I can press E and I can rotate those around as well. And there you go. Yep, hold right click and choose vertex and then you're in vertex mode, yeah. And you can, you can pop back into object mode anytime you want, move the whole object around, and then hold right click and pop back into vertex mode. So holding right click over that object is going to be how you, you switch between those. Um, but yeah, so selecting multiple verts is going to be an important uh, process. You know, we uh, got to get all those selected whenever we're trying to manipulate them and move them around. And yeah, manipulating is a, kind of like a different vocabulary in Maya. Manipulating just means like kind of moving them around the scene uh, because they called these things, remember, manipulators right here. So this, this is the move manipulator, this is the rotate manipulator, this is the scale manipulator. So, so yeah, so get used to those, get used to selecting. Um, to take away from a selection, if you have a bunch of verts selected and you don't want part of it, you can hold control, right? So now my cursor has a little minus next to it and you can rem uh, remove those verts from your selection. So there you go. There you go. All right. So, that's, uh, that's what vertices are. Now you'll notice that uh, connecting each vert is an edge right here, right? And I can't select it, right? That's because it's a different component. It's a different component of this cube. I hold right click, go into edge mode. Now I can select the edges. And you can see what it's gonna select. It'll highlight it in red. And then you can press shift to add it to your selection, or you can just left click it and then it will select only that edge. So lots of cool stuff right there unlocked. You know, you can start manipulating verts at a bigger scale, essentially, because this is just moving two verts at a time, right? But uh, we're going to go over some other usage very soon, very shortly. So that's edges. And then if you hold right click again, you can see that there's also face mode, right? So you have vertex, edge, and face. Now face mode, you can select uh, essentially four verts at a time because these are all quads. These are all little uh, square or four-sided four polygons. And then you're, you're actually selecting the polygonal face with this button. So so face mode is very nice. You can get a lot of your selecting done this way. Move the object around however you want, you know. So that's face mode. Awesome stuff. We're gonna go. We're gonna go more into like selecting and like cool, cool tools with that uh, next class. But I just want you guys to know about ver uh, vertices, edges, and faces. Uh, anyone have any questions about vertices, edges, or faces? before we go on. All right. Not quite, but oh, uh, Vanessa, that's literally what I was going to talk about. <laughs> that's literally what I was going to talk about right now. Um, very good question. Um, so. That's what those that's what those components are, right? 
But now let's talk about removing those components because we're, it, you know, you're, you're looking at these other shapes that, that you see in like movies and stuff. They're a bit more complex than a cube. Uh, let's talk about modifying those surfaces a little bit more, right? So if I want to delete a shape, so let me, let me create another cube. Let's say I like this original cube more. This, this cube's way cooler. How much time I spent on it. It looks, it looks so cool. You can just take this cube, just left click on it and delete it, boom, right? Now you can also delete components on this one. So if I go into face mode, I can delete that face and then you'll see, oh, my shape has like the inside exposed, you know? Um, and that's because it, it's showing you that this is the inside by shading it all black like this. Um, and that's basically because we're describing the surface of objects in 3D, right? And I know you've probably seen like a bunch of 3D stuff where objects are like broken up and you see the insides of it. That's usually simulated, right? Like if you if you have like a crate being blown up, like someone modeled the inside of that. They modeled all those timbers most likely of that surface, right? So when we're modeling something, we're basically just describing the surface. And, uh, and yeah, so, so that's what's going on there. That's why it's all shaded black in there. You can also delete edges, but it's gonna really mess up some stuff. So if I just delete those, boom, look at that. Now my cube looks, <laughs> it's not like it's so cube-like anymore, you know? Um, and that's fine. You can always control Z to get it back. But if you, if you I, I want you to look at this a little bit. So notice what has happened there. We've lost a lot of edges. And now if I go into face mode, we've made a cursed object, y'all. Uh, this is a six-sided face and we don't want that. Notice how before we had nice four-sided faces everywhere. Mm, amazing, beautiful, four sides only. Um, the math behind these, uh, oh, that's still a four-sided face. Let's delete all these again. Um, the math behind like this sort of shape is a lot more difficult. That's why you're seeing that weird shading. That's why you're seeing, um, that's why you're seeing this weird like tearing here across that face. It's because it's not, it, it, more than four-sided faces are gonna be hard to, to describe, right? For the program. They're also gonna be like impossible for other programs to describe. So don't use, um, don't use faces with more than four sides. It's going to be, it's going to cause you a lot of problems. Um, and then there's also on the flip side of that, let's restore that. If I cut across here and I'm using a tool that we're going to go into in just a second, if I cut across there and I make a triangle on both sides. That's not that great either. I'm going to go into, uh, why that's not great more next class, but essentially it makes selecting your model a little bit more difficult. And you'll get a little bit more uh, shading errors when you're um, when you're rendering it out. Sometimes, like that's definitely possible. So, so just be aware of that. Um, since this uh, since this was a quad, I can just easily go in here and delete that edge. Boom! Just press the I can just press the delete key or the backspace key, and it will delete that edge. Same way that we deleted that face. So that's components. And that's deleting components, that's, that's modifying them, um, modifying the surface. Any questions on that before we get into the actual uh, cool tools that do more interesting stuff? All right. All right. So now you're like, Mike, that's great. That's a fantastic cube that you have there. Looks a little bit morphed, a little, little bit broken. Um, let's fix that real quick. Uh, do, do, do. There we go. Um, that looks great, but that's still essentially a cube, Mike. Like you can't fool me. Uh, you can you can scale it up any way that you want. That's still going to look like a cube at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. You know. Uh, like if you look at those Marvel movies that I was showing earlier, the characters are a little bit more advanced than just cubes moving together. It's not like 
this isn't like Tron from the seventies or whatever. Um, we want to, we want to know how to get more advanced shapes. Right. And the way that you do that is called subdivision modeling or box modeling. Um, I'm essentially just going to make a new cube to show you guys. And the problem is that this still has a limited number of vertices on it, right? We need to add vertices to get more detail in certain places. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to add verts everywhere, you know? You don't want to go too crazy. Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit. Hopefully, the Zoom, hopefully my audio doesn't lag when that happens, but it might. Um, we need a little bit more definition in certain places, right? And I'm not... I'm just kind of showcasing it for you. But if I wanted to make like a backpack, I could kind of start just cutting across that surface and then adding a few more subdivisions in there, you know. Um, we could go into these faces right here and we can extrude those out, kind of get a little bit more definition on the front of that we could make a pocket as well pulling that out we could go in and sort of crease this up going into a bevel oh, didn't select that bevel that you know a little bit um so you can see how i'm starting to create a little bit more uh, geometry on it, right? Because if you if you don't have more geometry on your object, it's you're going to be always limited by that like small poly count of you know six vertices or whatever or eight vertices. My bad. Um, but yeah, so this is the the process, and there's a lot of different ways to sort of create the. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm 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 getting into that. I just wanted to show you like the process of that. I, I didn't actually like I give you the, the tool knowledge yet, but uh, essentially uh, I'm just adding more divisions on there and I'm keeping it nice and light. Like this isn't super dense in terms of polys. Like I could get like a really nice curve right here by like really dividing it up. Ah, it's so divided, you know? And then you have like a bunch right here and you're like, okay, now I have to like try to get this to look nice and curved but then you're like you're messing around with a bunch of polys you know you could you could instead just divide those after i like to keep it nice and lean for for a, a long time especially when we're learning um but the way i'm doing that is with more tools right so in your modeling toolkit is where you get all of those extra tools so if you go into the modeling toolkit and let me just move this over to the side again. Boom, let's create a, another cube. Uh, the biggest one is multi-cut. Now these are all huge tools, but like the, the this is the, the main one for kind of cutting edge loops, right? And if I click on multi-cut, I'm now in multi-cut mode. The, the button has been highlighted. And you can see that if I mouse over any sort of surface on this, it's going to start trying to make like cuts, like see how it's cutting from that top right vert to where my, my cursor is. And it's like top left, top right, you know? So if we start from there and start cutting around, I'm just left clicking to make cuts. And then once you have a cut like that, you can press enter and that's cool. But now we've created a, like another six sided face. Disgusting. How could we? Why did we do this? You know, um, so that's cool because you can create some more geometry. I want you guys to become familiar though with uh, holding control while you're using it. And look at that. See how it's cutting a nice clean loop around the surface. Y'all see that? This is what we call an edge loop, right? Makes sense. You're cutting a loop of edges around the object like that. Fantastic. Um, Another cool reason that we need the middle click is because if you if you hold control and then middle click, boom, it makes the subdivision right in the middle of that. It makes that edge loop right along the middle of, of whatever edge you had it on, you know, regardless of where your cursor is, like see how far over to the left I am. 
if I middle click, boom, right down the center. It's so sick. So that's a really fun button. I love that. I love that one. Um, so that's multi-cut, right? Multi-cut's fantastic because now you have, if I just add another cut right here, I have this extra geometry. If I'm just, I'm just shift selecting these verts in vertex mode by holding right click and going into vertex mode. Um, if you have these verts available, you can just start, you know, rotating them around. You get, you get this wacky sort of cube. If you scale them in, you can kind of start getting a rounder shape. You know, that's cool too. You can do the same for, for these, you know, so it, it's, just with that that little amount of subdividing, you get so much additional uh, ability to shape an object, you know. So that's the magic of multi-cut. Uh, let's control Z, boom, there we go. So that's multi-cut, fantastic tool, fantastic tool. Um, any questions about multi-cut multi before we move on? All right, all right. And we're gonna go over these tools more in the future, but uh, I wanna display them for y'all. Um, but the next tool that we're gonna talk about is extrude. Now, multi-cut when you press that button, sorry, this tool tips in the way. Multi-cut when you press that button, uh, you're in multi-cut mode, right? Uh, extrude works a little bit differently. You have to have something selected first and it has to be a face or an edge. And I want you guys to be extruding faces only for this for this time. Um, but yeah, so if I select two of these faces by going into uh, by holding right click and going into face mode, if I extrude, I get this new manipulator, right? And that manipulator pulls out from the object, um, but it also comes with this little menu. You can you can extend this. You can offset it so it'll kind of scale a little bit inward. And I really like the, I, I like just clicking on these and dragging, but I also like holding control and shift while I do it. So I get like really finite control on it. So look, you can like offset that. And then if you wanted, you could, you could extrude again with that extrude button. Boom. And you could offset that more and you could like push it inward, you know? You can also extrude, you can offset that in, you could push it out as well. And you get new geometry where that existed before, you know, like these are all new faces, all these ones right here. Those are all new faces right there. And so that's a really, really powerful tool. So basically between um, multi-cut and extrude, you can handle most things in 3D though some would be a little bit more laborious than like other tools, like other tools are designed for specific stuff. Um, but we'll go into those next class. Um, and so yeah, that's extrude right there. I want to be clear, though, if you extrude something, so if I, I select this face, and if I press the extrude button, boom, the extrude has already happened. See this result poly extrude down here. Um, it is already happened, right? So if I click off, I just deselected it and I'm just going about my business. One of the biggest problems is that if I click that face that I extruded and if I move it, boom, you see that? Like it, it already has, it has those duplicate vertices right on top of each other. And that can be really annoying. It can be super annoying um, because you'll just have these secret little extra vertices like that are hidden right on top of each other. It's like the most, it's the most like basic modeling problem that we encounter when we're learning. Um, can that extrude be undone later? No, it cannot, it cannot, um, but we can fix it. We can fix it. And I'm gonna show you how to fix it with another tool. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to fix it like in a more robust way. That's like kind of easier. Um, so if I scale that, that uh, face down, you can really see all of like the components of it, right? And this will be our last tool of the day. Um, if you go into target weld, you'll be in your target weld tool. And so if I left click that, I'm in target weld mode. 
and you can target weld edges or verts. Uh, let's just do vertex though. So I'm holding right click and I'm in vertex mode. And I usually just left click on a singular one just to refresh it. And then the cool thing about target weld is you left click and drag to another vert. Oh, look at that. See how it's, it's welding those together. It's making those two verts one point, right? So now if I click on one of those verts and then move it, I don't have that like extra vert there anymore. It just, boom, smashed those together and modified that surface. So it, between target weld, multi-cut and extrude, you could model anything, like literally anything. It'll just take a long time for some certain actions, certain specific actions, you know? Like I want you guys to, 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 to be of that mindset, right? Like given enough time with those tools, you can model pretty much anything. Um, but yeah, now for that, back to that extrude thing. So if you press control E, boom, hot key for extrude. You don't always have to press this button right here. If you press control E, you're, you've extruded that face. Please move it or undo until it says poly extrude, right? So undo poly extrude, just to make sure that you're not getting duplicate uh, verts everywhere. Um, I know I, I say that now, but like, it's going to happen. Don't be hard on yourselves. It's going to, it's definitely going to happen at some point. You're going to get some extra, extra geometry right there. Um, now a way to solve that, that's not just target welding all the verts on top of themselves again, um, is essentially doing that same thing, but in a more automated way. If you go into vertex mode. And I guess this isn't an additional tool, but you know, I just want to make everyone aware of it. I have right here, those duplicate verts, right? And you can only see them once you start moving the components around piece by piece. Um, and what we do is if we go into vertex mode and just drag select over all of those, if we go to edit mesh merge, that's going to, apply a tool that like it kind of measures the distance between each vertex in here and ones that are super close together it just it just smashes together right so now if i press if i go into that face and i move it around it's all fixed up so so yeah that's just that uh, that's part of the modeling process be aware of that that uh, edit mesh merge tool again i have all these tools and their hotkeys written on uh, canvas somewhere it's in one of those handouts that's in the uh, modeling module. Um, feel free to check it out. But but yeah, so that's extrude, multi-cut, and target weld. And you can make so many, you can make so many things with that. Like it's just the possibilities are, are really, really endless. And they call it, uh, it, it's technically called subdivision modeling because you're adding subdivisions by cutting across it like that, you know? But uh, it's also called box modeling, right? Because you can see that I'm essentially starting from a cube and I'm able to end up with so many other things, you know? So many different shapes in this, you know? So it's, it's, a, real, it's a real awesome process. Um, I love modeling. It's like my favorite thing, um, despite being an animator. It's kind of weird, uh, but but yeah, modeling. So it's, it's so much fun. Um, any questions about multi-cut, target weld, or extrude before I move on to detailing out the homework? All right, all right. So. Um, for homework, uh, the, the goal is to just make a small little environment with these tools, right? So I just made a, I just made a, like a backpack there. Uh, how about I start making a room? So I'm going to start with a plane, polygonal plane. I'm just going to scale it up, you know, and, oh, was it control click to make an edge loop? Yeah. With the multi-cut. Yeah. So in multi-cut mode. You hold control, and then you'll see where it's going to insert that um, that edge loop. See that? So it, it gives you, it gives a nice little preview. And then remember, middle click puts that that little cut dead center of whatever edge you had selected. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be making a little room, right? 
or it, it could be like a it could be whatever type of environment that you want to make it could be like a, a, a temple it could be um, a, a forest would be more difficult because the shapes are a lot more organic uh, so I, I'd recommend like you know something a little bit more uh, rigid in shape so a room an office um, you could do like maybe like a playground or something or your apartment even like you can just look around and model the shapes that you see around you but yeah just go in start making some some walls out of cubes like this there you go And then just start rotating them. If I wanted this to be at perfect 90 degree rotation, I could just type that into my channel box. And I can control D to duplicate them real quick. Put my backpack up against the wall. I can start making a, like a desk, Let's do a cube. And then start like shrinking this down. Let's put it up against the wall, you know. Might as well duplicate this. Get some struts going for that, for that shape right there. You know, for the support of that desk, let's do some multi-cuts for the legs let's cut that out cut that out and then we can extrude this face these faces right there boom i got my little little legs of the desk there i can duplicate that and move it over and then yeah I can start to like round out the corners of this desk by like multi-cutting top and bottom. I can multi-cut this as well. So yeah, possibilities are endless, y'all. Absolutely endless. Um, and yeah, so just have fun, make an environment um, doesn't have to be super, super detailed, but I do want to see use of multi-cut, extrude, and target weld. So use all of those. Get familiar with some primitives too, you know, like sometimes a cylinder is just better for the job. Sometimes a cylinder is the, the one that you want, you know. Like if you're making like a floor lamp, you could extrude like the bottom of this out um it's gonna give you some more geometry there let's do an extrusion again let's scale it up move it out extrude oops control d uh what happens if you extrude a curved face um essentially you're gonna want to not have a curved face but it also depends on like what you're talking about zoe because um, I meant like if you like extruded the edge of the cylinder that wasn't one of the two like ends. Ah, yeah, yeah. Happen. So you, it, uh, let's oh. just let's just demo it right here. Let's do it. So if I like the, these faces are all kind of curved out, right? As Zoe pointed out, um, actually they're they're kind of small. Let's use like one of these ones that are a little bit bigger, easier to see. So if I control E, and then drag out on this blue see how they're gonna they kind of conform to that that previous shape so that's nice um you can also do thickness that's going to do the same thing um if you instead if you uh if you do extrude right there and then press w then it's it's just your basic move tool so it's going to keep that exact curve right there but i i feel like it won't it won't look as good like it's not scaling it up as it's going you know so Make sure that you use the proper little manipulator while you still have it right here, you know. Um, but yeah. So if you try to extrude a sphere, will it just do like something similar and just make it bigger? 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if I okay. if I select some faces on here, let's get like part of the that hemisphere right there, and then Control E, and then do some some thickness. It's just kind of gonna scale that up and kind of conform to the shape of it. And the inverse is true as well. So if I have like a donut shape right here, if I scale up some of these interior ones. So if I extrude this and then pull on it, see how they're getting kind of like squeezed together. So you can kind of break it by going too far. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, look at that same, same sort of effect. Noise. Noise, noise, noise. All right, delete that, delete that. But yeah, so just make a little environment. It doesn't have to be super detailed. I want to see the use of multi-cut uh, extrude and target weld, though. You know, so if you if you uh, only want to do a few objects in here, you can just shorten your diorama. You know, like make it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. Just do like this corner of the room. You know, like I could delete these, delete these. I could scale this shape to be a little bit smaller. And there you go. Um, all right. Oh, can you go over target weld again, please? Oh, absolutely. So target weld, um, it basically takes two separate verts and kind of just compresses them together. So if I show that on a sphere, uh, I'll go into target weld mode and then I have vertex mode use and see how it's just kind of it, it it if i left click drag from one to the other it just kind of compresses them together and makes them one vertex you know so now it's now it's one right there and uh it's useful for fixing like holes and stuff so if i if i deleted like faces right here what i could do is go into edge mode i could extrude these out and then if I go to target weld, I can just weld that edge to the other edge right there. Kind of fix it up like that, you know? So that's a, that's a nice use for it. Um, there's definitely, there's more situations where you use it, but it's, it's usually for like fixing stuff up or reducing geometry. Um, but remember, if you, if you want just a, a whole edge loop to be gone, you can just uh, double click it and then press control D. I mean, a control delete, and that'll delete that whole edge. Uh, remember, uh, I forgot to mention this when we were deleting edges earlier, but if you just press, if you select like some edges and then press delete, uh, it does leave the vertices behind. So you gotta be sure to, to select those and then delete those too. That's why whenever I'm deleting, I press, I press control and delete because it does both the edges and the vertices at the same time, right? So that's just a small little detail that you guys will get used to as uh, as you start modeling and, and see like what what shapes are getting created when you're deleting stuff. But yeah. But yeah, so for the environment, don't go too complex. You can just do like a little a little side of a room like this or something um, and get some and just fill it with some props in there. Get some cool props going. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a room either. It could be like a fantasy setting. It could be like a library. It could be anything, but, you know, so, so just keep that in mind. Um, is there anything, any prop that you guys want me to show you how to model right now while you guys have me? Something reasonably simple, by the way. Um, if it's like, oh, never mind. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Zach, but um, maybe after that, like, do you know, like, if I want to, like, put a little blanket on the end of a bed or something, is there an easy way to do that? Or is it something you'd say we should wait until we know how to do more? Uh, no, you can do a, a, a blanket on something. So I would just do a plane. And then if I want to do, like, a little cloth hanging over here, I'm just going to get that over here over the edge. I'm oh, sorry, my computer's lagging. Uh, and then let's just get that like rotated here. Um, 
And I would say the easiest way, because I'm trying to not use a bunch of tools that we don't know about yet. Um, I would say easiest way is to select a bunch of verts like this and then rotate them like this. And then like it's it's all torn apart, you know, but if you if you move it a little bit closer to the surface, then it's kind of it kind of gives it that effect of it hanging over. You can kind of smooth these verts out as well. Kind of move them down like that. Is there like an easy way to make it like a little wrinkled or rumpled or is um I don't know. there there is there is but i would um it, it would be more tools that we don't know yet i, I don't want to like flog you guys with a bunch of tools you know but i would actually kind of simulate that i would make this i would make this surface um like a solid object and then i would make this a cloth object and then kind of simulate it hanging over the side of it um or i would sculpt it and then uh do some more fancy stuff on it to kind of get like some some nice cloth detailing in there. But for now, I'd say just use that, just use that basic vert rotation technique. Um, next class, I'm going to show uh, soft select, which is kind of like another thing that we'd be looking for. Um, and since you just seem curious about like the tools, uh, basically, if you press B, you're going to get a fall off. So if I press B, or like B toggles between soft select and non soft select. If you hold B and middle mouse drag, you can get like this sort of stuff. So that's kind of like what I would do with just default Maya tools. But again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to send you guys on, uh, you know, tools overload by showing you all these. But, but yeah. So I hope that helps. You wanted to give that plane a little thickness is that possible i'm glad you asked that chloe um i'm gonna press b to get out of soft select mode and i would just double click it and then i'm in i'm in face mode by the way and in face mode i would just double click it and then Control e and then just add a little bit of thickness onto it you know so just add a little bit of thickness there there you go now we have a, a nice little cloth hanging off that off that desk. How do we turn our homework into Canvas? Uh, there should be a um, if I, in case I didn't open it, I might not have opened it because of um, like different dates on the Dropbox submission. But there there should be a little little Dropbox uh, thing in the uh, Canvas. Let's see courses. Excuse me. Here we go. Uh, yeah, there'll be there'll be a, an assignment for it, and uh, yeah, it'll be this one, and you can submit to that. Why is this so cool, dude? It's because it's freaking badass. That's why. That's freaking why, dude. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love this stuff though. This is like my favorite. Um, I just love modeling stuff. Any any other objects that y'all wanna y'all want me to demo how to model? Can you do a bottle really quickly? The wire. Okay, I forgot Zach asked about a wire earlier. So um, essentially for a wire using tools that we know about, I would just use a, one second. I would use a cylinder and I would move it. I'll do the bottle afterwards. Just make sure that I, that you remind, remind me to, to model it but uh, I'm going to scale this down, make it really skinny. And there's, there's a much better way to do this where you can extrude along a curve, but just using tools that we know. I'm just going to show you. I'm basically just going to extrude the end of this. And this is just a, this is just a cylinder, right? Uh, and I'm just extruding over here extruding i'm rotating it a little bit um and i'm rotating it a bit more if i wanted more definition i could now multi-cut a few additional edge loops in here and i like to do insert with edge flow enabled when i'm doing like an ex uh, when i'm doing cuts like this and it kind of you'll see that it's going to automatically give me a bit of curve to that to that uh, 
object, um, but it's not going to always work super well. But I do I do like it for for giving that that sort of curved surface to that. Yes, yeah, so that's how I do a wire using stuff that we know. Uh, now that you extruded the fabric, can you? Oh wait, uh, you say I want to learn that later. Okay, yeah, yeah. Google extrude along a curve, Zach, and it'll be uh, perfect. I want to get to more some of these uh, these basic examples for the time being. So let's talk about the bottle. Um, to make to make a bottle, I'm going to show you how to do it from a cube. Uh, because I want to, I want to stress the the idea that we can make everything out of a cube. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get to that in, in a bit, though, Zach. I can show you. Uh, it's been a, it's been years since I've done that, though, so I might have to do some trial and error. Um, but essentially, I just cut a, a few divisions along this cube, right? Just cut a few divisions right there. Uh, now, if I select all of these outside edges. And this one is a big perplexer for, for the students first times, but I have all these four selected here. And oh, sorry, I, I, I should have mentioned this earlier. I, I, I skipped over this part of the lecture. Um, but if you press four, you go into wireframe view. If you press four on your keyboard, you go into wireframe view. There you go. Um, and that's going to let you see through the model. That can be very helpful. Sorry, guys, about that. I, 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 that, I usually mention that when I'm going over the, uh, the camera with this stuff, but I just forgot about it. Um, but yeah, if you press four, you're in wireframe. Then if you press five, you're back in that shaded view. So that's how you return. Um, and so if we have these subdivisions, right, these edges right here, like these verts right here and right here are retaining that sort of width of it. But if we start moving in these edges, we're going to get a rounder shape, right? We're going to get a much more round shape. Um, the problem with doing it like this is that they're a little bit uneven. Like if I look at it from the top, it's a little bit uneven. So if we want precision, what we can do is select all of those corners and then scale them inward on red and blue right there, right? And then remember, I also said that with these side manipulators, like these little squares between the blue and the red, or between the you know green and the red as well, you can drag those and it'll scale all of them at the same time. So now I'm getting that nice, clean, round shape, and it's still very low poly. And then essentially what I can do from there is select all these top faces, and then I'll control E to extrude. And I'll just drag that up a little bit and then I'll scale down a little bit and then move it up. And so that's like kind of forming the, the little curve of the bottle. And then I'm gonna control E again. Let's bring it in even a little bit more or a little bit less actually. And uh, we, we can always fix this afterwards. And then I'm gonna just control E again move that up and then this will be the, the lip of the bottle and then control E, I'm gonna press R again to scale a little bit, move it up, control E, control E, scale, control E, W to move, make that down. So there you go. So it's just, it's just all, all that. Is, is right there. And then if I want this to be more uh, smooth, I can always add a few subdivisions, right? If I do multi-cut, boom. And then uh, if I go into edge mode, I can double click this edge and I can just scale that, you know? So it's gonna be nice and smooth right there. Now, if I did wanna start with like a, a higher poly, um, like a, a cylinder at the start, then that's completely fine. You know, I would just have to add more subdivisions. Um, but right now you can also, I don't recommend doing this for our, our first time, you know, but you can also hit this smooth button here. That's gonna, it's gonna cut up our surface a bunch and essentially just add a bunch of subdivisions everywhere. But, uh, but yeah, so lots of cool, lots of cool options in there. Um, but yeah, so you got a bottle. 
Uh, the bottom's a little bit messed up, so I would undo that. And I would multi-cut that before smoothing it. Here. And yeah, so there you go. Bottle, it's a little bit oversized. This person's in for a, a, a wild night, I guess. Uh, they're gonna get, they're gonna turn up. <laughs> Haley's getting ready to turn up as well. Uh, there we go. So scale that and then just move that down. Um, can you only, can you smooth only certain sections? Um, you know, I've never actually tried to just smooth one face. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So that works. Um, generally, you don't want to do that though, Chloe, because observe, if I look at the edges, we have one, two, three, four, five edges now. That's a, it's a big no, no. We, we only want four, we only want four uh, polygons on, on all of these faces, you know, only four. So there, there's a reason that we don't really smooth just one portion of it. You know, you usually smooth the whole object. Now, speaking of smoothing, before I uh, go on to other examples, you can also smooth preview any object. So if I create this cube, if I press three, remember four was wireframe, and then five is shaded view. If you press three, it's gonna like kind of auto smooth the object and show you what it'll look like if you press this smooth button a couple times, you know? So if I click this backpack and press three, there you go. So it's like a little bit of a, a smoother shape now. And it's just interesting to, to, to play around with, you know? Let's see what this looks like. Nice. So that's all smooth and you can render stuff out this way as well. So, um, so it's fine if you're working with a uh, smooth preview in mind for your, for your end project. But yeah, any other objects that I should model for you guys while I'm still here? This isn't an object, but when you're like placing your objects in the room, is there any way to like put something right up against um, another mm -hmm. object without either like hovering it or sinking slightly into it? If that may, like, could yeah. you place the bottle oh, like on absolutely. top of the table? Absolutely. Um, so what you're talking about is snapping essentially, right? And let me also, so this bottle's a little bit round on the bottom. Let me flatten it up so I can demo this properly. So I'm just going to select all of those bottom verts from the side like that. Then I'm going to scale on Y. So it's going to get all crumpled up there, right? And now it's perfectly flat on bottom by scaling it like that, you know? Um, and essentially what you, we're going to go over this in um, at the, it's at the start of next week's homework. Uh, oh, Claudia, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Um, we're essentially going to go over it uh, next homework, but I, you know, since you asked, I'm going to, I'm more than happy to share. Uh, essentially, we're going to be playing around with this pivot point, right? Because right now my pivot point's just all messed up for this object to do this. So again, to get it back to the center, you can just go to modify center pivot, and then even now it's like I, I have no way to kind of put that there, right? Like I can, I can eyeball it. And that's commonly what we'll do is just eyeball it and just zoom in really close, you know? Um, but if we want to be precise, I can hold D and you'll see my manipulator changes, right? And it's like, oh, okay, I'll just move the object, but no, that's moving the, that's moving the pivot point now, right? So if I move, if I'm in this mode and I hold V, it's going to snap to vertex. So if I, if I pull on this up and down axis of Y, if I snap that to these bottom verts, now my pivot point is down there, right? And then if I press D again, or let go of D if you were holding it, um, insert also works for that. Uh, that pivot point is now snapped perfectly to those verts on the bottom. Now, if, if I hold V again, I can snap it to any vert in this table or any like in the room 
see how it's just snapping to those different verte uh, vertices around. Um, and if I do that, but if I hold only the Y axis, because I just, I just basically need it to, if I like the position in terms of left and right, but I just need the up and down to be right, I'll just hold V and start dragging on that axis and find a point of that table, right? So it's going to help if I turn on the wireframe as well. I'm basically holding V, grabbing that Y axis, and then dragging it over to this vert right here, because I know that that one's the same as that, that table, and now they're perfectly stacked on top of each other. Like, no matter how far I zoom in there, you know? So yeah, thanks for asking that question. That's, a, that's a, it's an interesting one. Um, any other props that y'all want to see me model? I want to see another prop, but I don't have one in mind. Just, I just want to see another one. <laughs> <laughs> so like, don't leave if someone doesn't give an example. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, uh, if anyone, if anyone has a request, I'll just do, I'll do a mug for now to accompany this, this bottle. Uh, let's do, I'm going to start with a cube because I, I'm, I'm preaching to the cube choir here, y'all. I'm preaching to the cube choir. I want you guys to know that you can make anything with a cube. Book maybe too. Ooh, I like book. Dragon, a little bit advanced, but we can get like a, we can get a scuffed version of dragon probably pretty quick. Um, but yeah, so let's scale that in. And I'm gonna also, I'm gonna turn on some symmetry. Y'all don't have to turn on symmetry, but I wanna, I wanna just get some more subdivisions in here quick. And let's start scaling these, moving it down a little bit. Let's move these out. I'm gonna turn off symmetry and then get all of these selected. There we go. So that's a smoother, it's a smoother cylinder, right? And oop, I messed up on up and down. See that? See from the side how these are kind of crinkling in. I'm just gonna fix that by selecting all those verts and just kind of squishing them in the y-axis with my scale tool. Remember, that's the R button. And then the same down here. Here we go. And then uh, since it's a mug, it needs to have some depth in it. So I'm gonna select all these top faces right here. I know I got these side ones. But if I just hold control and then I left click drag over those, it's going to remove that from the selection. You know, uh, that just comes with time. Like be like learning how to select things fast. Like eventually you're going to be modeling at 2 a.m. You're like, why can I just do this faster? You know, and then you'll figure out a way. Like that's that's just going to come with time. Like I just showed you a way right there, but it's gonna it's gonna take a little while for it to sink in. You know. Um, and then we need a uh, we need a handle for this mug, right? So I need if I just try to extrude out a handle right here, it's going to be a bit weird. Be like, ugh, it's like not, it's not so much a handle so much as just like a slab that you'd hold on to. A little bit of a strange, a uh, little bit of a strange uh, way to hold it. But what I'm going to do is give myself some edge loops here with multi cut and control. And then essentially what that's gonna allow me to do is uh, give me geometry to extrude that handle shape out with, right? Uh, so if, now if I go in here and select those, these are gonna be my little insertion points for that handle. So I'm gonna press Control E and I'm gonna press R to scale because they're a little bit too thick still. I wanna get this to be a little bit more reasonable. And let's start shaping these verts up, you know? Let's kind of start curving those. And I'm gonna just keep extruding this top one out. I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna extrude this one out and rotate that. I'm gonna extrude this one again. I'm gonna rotate that. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, Mike, just extrude it into that other one. You're essentially right. But first, since remember, we're describing the surface of this shape, right? We don't, we don't describe the insides ever. 
we have to delete these edges, uh, these faces right there, right? Because if I just extrude across and then target weld, it's gonna like it, it's gonna we're gonna have this shape. Like some of these faces will be on the inside of the shape, and that's not right. So I'm gonna delete those, and then I'm gonna go into edge mode, and I'm gonna extrude this out, and I'm gonna press W to go to move tool. And they're almost there. It's looking pretty good. But if I do target weld, I can just drag that across and start welding those together. And there you go. There you go. So now that's a, that's a mug right there. And you'll notice that mine looks like really rigid on the shapes of it, right? Um, that's just a display thing. So if you go up to mesh display, if you like select it and go to mesh display, you just do soften edge. If you just want to make it a little bit softer there. Um, you can also like, like I liked how hard that bottom edge was. So if I select all of that, you can make that hard. If you have weird looking shading like that in the homework, I'm not going to dock any points or anything. Um, but yeah, you can just harden up that edge right there and it's looking good. You can press three, you can see what it looks like in smooth preview with that selected. And it looks pretty cool. I like it. Uh, a book maybe too. Okay, so I'm going to start with a cube. You're sensing a pattern of, oh, Mike just only makes cubes. And it's true, you know, like this, it's a, it's a great jumping off point. And then I'm just going to scale the whole object. And... Let's see, how will we do this? Okay, I got an idea. So if we kind of pull, this is gonna be the binding right here. I'm making the binding. So it's gonna be a little bit rounder right there. I'm kind of going for like an older style book, like something that you'd find in like a dusty library, you know? There we go. So see how that's round? I just added a, little, a few edge loops there to give me the, the amount of geometry that I needed to make it round. And then let's go, make a cut right here. I'm basically going to be cutting out the shape of the pages that I'm going to extrude inward, right? So if I cut right here and I'm just eyeballing it, I could use symmetry and be like perfect, but so that's looking good. And I'm just going to select all of these faces. So these are all the pages. And I'm just going to press Control E or the extrude button, you know, Control E and then thickness. Look at that. So if I just push in on that thickness, boom, it just looks like the, it looks like a book now. It's got the, it got those pages, you know, so very cool. Uh, if you wanted it to be like, oh, it's a little bit long. It's like a weird long book. Let's move that back. There you go. Very cool. Um, if you wanted it to be like, have like a little bit of disheveled pages in there too, you could just make some polygonal planes. Just kind of like rotate those um, in here and move it up, kind of like scale it. Kind of have like, like someone like, oh, my antivirus, nice. Thanks, antivirus, very cool. Um, but you could like scale those up and get out of here. Um, you can move these around. Like it's like someone like really heavily notated this book or something. You could add that sort of feel to it, you know. But yeah, also notice that they're not like the same object. We're going to get into more of that uh, next week with our modeling skills. But uh, that's a, it's a very common thing. You can just include stuff like that. Um, all right. Uh, any other suggestions? Any other suggestions? Could you combine those and then do? Chloe's getting into next lecture, but I like it. So if you select all of those, you can go into uh, make sure you're in your modeling, uh, your modeling uh, menu set. And if you select all of those, go into mesh and go to combine. Boom. That's now one object, but you can still see that those faces are like not combined. Like it didn't combine these faces together. Like if I just double click those. So they're just hanging out. Those ones are just vibing inside that book, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so you can definitely do that, Chloe. Uh, and then you could definitely duplicate that, you know, 
And like, if you wanted to give it a little bit of difference, you could like scale it a little bit, kind of like rotate it, you know, have it leaning up against that other book. Because you definitely do not need to make every single book like bespoke style, you know, it doesn't need to happen, you know. So there you go. So you got, you guys got some books right there for you. All right. Any other requests? I know we have dragon on the list, but uh, this that's something I would much more try to create in ZBrush <laughs> rather than mine. Sword make Kratos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll just take uh, Raf Grissetti's job and make Kratos. Uh, yeah, real, real quick. Gamer chair. Oh, I definitely like gamer chair. Sword. Ooh, okay, very nice. Sword. I would comprise of. Uh, I'll just show you the, the the cube again. You know, let's do multi cut. There you go. Freddy Fazbear. Zoe hitting us with the Five Nights at Freddy's uh let's see here we go i'm gonna make the uh the the handle of the sword right here very cool done perfect then uh let's do a cube let's do the uh cross guard for it and i'm gonna multi-cut it up a little bit I'm going to add one to the middle and get one on either side and kind of just select these. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit on both sides, you know. And then let's get another cube. And like I said, you can make cubes into anything. The possibilities are endless, y'all. You just need to go throughout life and start breaking things down into cubes mentally. And the world is your oyster. So here we go. I'm just taking the, I'm just making that middle point a little bit higher up there. And then I'm going to go in and kind of scale down the sides of this, right? Because I want to get that, that sharp sort of edge on the sides. Very nice. And I'm stabbing this cube. So let's move that cube. I don't want any cubes harmed in this classroom. I say that, but we will absolutely harm a lot of cubes when we're learning. So here we go. And sword. Sword complete. And you could like just detail it up a little bit more, you know, add some like decoration down here. Like if I just make a multi cut and then I extrude that out, you know, give it a little, get a little like that, that bottom thing. What is that? Like the pommel, I think. Um, let's see. Oh, gamer chair, gamer chair for sure. Can I model a plant in a planter? Yeah, I could. Absolutely. I'm in a gamer chair right now. So I have some great reference if I just turn around. Um, I'm essentially going to make it out of a cube, you know, we're just going to scale that cube down. Let's put it to the desk to see like what kind of scale we're working at. Okay. Let's get a little bit bigger right there and then boom, cut down the center. And then I'm going to cut down the side. And cut right here. I'm gonna also, I'm just gonna go into vertex mode. I'm gonna go into symmetry because it's gonna be a little bit more complex, I think. And then let's move this inward. And essentially, I'm going to cut where each of these like little cushions are and just kind of start to scale in a little bit. See that? And then I'm gonna. Bring these out. Uh, could I model a plant in a planter or would that be too organic? I could absolutely do that. 
Um, and then uh, this one has like a weird cushion in the middle. So I'm going to get that shape extruded out. Now offset that in a little bit. I'm gonna take these verts, kind of push them in. I'm just kind of free balling this at this point, not making it close to the reference, uh, which is a, a problem for me, but you know, no one's supervising this chair. I can do whatever I want with it. Boom, boom. So I'm just gonna add some verts right here and just kind of scale it out a little bit. Just move it out a little bit. There we go. And then I think, okay, yeah, I'm just completely making up the chair now. This looks nothing like mine, but that's fine. Um, I can just extrude this out and then scale it down, move it inward, kind of give it that, try to reduce the sharpness of these corners, you know, a little bit. But yeah, so that's the process. And then I would extrude these cushions out as well, you know. Probably do them separately. There we go. And offset those in. Let's do this less thickness. Oh, yeah, we're ready to game. We're freaking ready to game, y'all. Um, mesh display. Let's soften that. And then if you want to, if you want to make some of these hard like these ones to define the cushions, then you definitely could mesh display hard and edge, you know, so you, you have that ability. And then I would make the chair as well, but I, I do want to get to the, the, the plant one as well while we still have time. Uh, again, planter, I'm kind of thinking of the like rectangular planters, you know, um, you're giving me so much faith in my abilities by making this look so simple. Uh, it's, um, it, you, you'll you'll get better with time. It just it just honestly takes time. Um, ooh, yeah. One thing though, if you if you have symmetry enabled in here, um, you can't cut a line of symmetry across that axis. Otherwise, it it messes up. Like the math just doesn't work. Like watch when I try to do it right here. Boom. See that? It just messes up. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, the, this just comes with practice, y'all. Like. You guys can definitely do this. Like, it just takes time. So let's just offset that. And then I'm gonna uh, extrude that and then uh, press W to move it down. Um, and then I'm just gonna make like one, uh, one little leafy boy and then I'll just duplicate that around, you know? So let's make a, just looking at the plants in my apartment right now. So let's, I'm just, I just scaled, scaled a cube down and I'm multi cutting it a bunch. And I'm just going to make it like, a, I'm essentially just going to make the plant shape of like a leaf, you know? So let's get that going. Right there. Scale that as well. Boom. So that's kind of leafy looking, a little bit leafy looking. Let's scale that down in this way. And let's give ourselves like a, a little multi cut. Um, right here, I kind of want to go across this way right here. And it's not symmetrical perfectly, but like, you know, it's an organic shape. And I'm just gonna kind of give that crease to the, the leaf right there. Let's go and grab this. I would use the soft select for this part as well to sort of get a little bit more of that bend in the leaf right there. Let's do a multi-cut. I'm turning off soft select with B as well. Again, soft select bonus tool. We don't need to know about that yet. That's for next week. Um, but there you go. So I'm getting a little bit of a bendy leaf sort of shape right here. Adding another multi-cut to get a little bit of a bend right there too. Let's scale this out. Boom. Look at that. Mm. 
Let's get some of that scale in there. Very nice. So one leaf assembled. And then uh, let's just give it like a little bit of a stem to that. So I'm just going to make a cylinder. And we're just going to scale it on the blue and the red at the same time. Bloop, there we go. And then I'm going to scale it on Y a little bit too. I'm going to give it a little bit of a uh, rotation there. Doot, doot, doot. I'm just making some multi cuts with control right there. And then I'm going to move those around. So now this is getting a little bit more. More bent right there. See that? And then uh, we can do that cool mesh combine thing that I was talking about earlier. Mesh combine. And then I can uh, move this into the planter. It's not. It's not one of those flowery ones. It's just one of those uh, leafy boys. Um, because my old roommate was obsessed with them. You know, she had a she had a plant. Uh, purchasing addiction, <laughs> but I mean the apartment looked nicer for it, so you know I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn that down. But then we can just we can just duplicate that around, just pressing Control D, pressing W to move. I'm just you know moving it around with with the W tool, the W move tool. I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit, move it again, you know all this sort of stuff. And then I'm gonna select all of them. Oh, I'm gonna duplicate them all at the same time. Rotate them all around. Very nice. Um, oh, whoops, kind of a little bit too offset, that's fine. But yeah, leafy boy, established. And then I'm gonna select all of them, Control D again, there you go. And it's very, very leafy, very potted, very vibrant, y'all. There you go. That's fucking incredible. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, water is simulated, is a simulated thing, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, not all the times though, like in video games, definitely not simulated. Um, but in like, in a, like that scene in like Lord of the Rings where that, that water was like pushing that dam over, I'm pretty sure that was a practical effect, but, um, if that was done nowadays, they would simulate all that massive water pushing through there. And they'd use a program called Houdini for that. Houdini. Um, and it's, it's like, it, it's amazing at simulation for stuff like that. So. So yeah, that's how we would do water. Um, but you can also do just like a plane, like just like a quad of Houdini is correct. <laughs> Dude, yeah, true, true. Uh, you could just do a plane as well. Um, that's like subdivided up and then just has some uh, fancy stuff going on in the material. Uh, Zach, you know about materials from, from last year. Um, but, uh, but yeah, some fancy stuff going on in the material. I can fake it looking like water. So like Far, far away, it might uh, hold up really well, but like close up, it'll, it might look a little bit uh, whack. But, but yeah, you can definitely do stuff like that. Um, nice. So we have seven minutes left, y'all. Seven minutes. Any, any other requests? Any other requests? <laughs> Extrude on curve. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Like I said, it's been it's been many a years. Also, everyone else, don't worry about it. Um, you don't need to do this. Uh, this is for for Zach. Zach was in my uh, class last year, um, and he decided to come back for a double dose. You know, so we'll get something for him to do. Uh, same with Connor. 
Same with Connor. All right, so we got a nice curve there. Let's see. So that curve is in space. And then let's get a, oof, oof. Yeah, how does this work? It's been so long, Zach. It's been so long. Let's do a poly disc. And then let's control. I'll go more into this stuff later, y'all. Don't worry about it. Let's do one. Eh, no, let's do two on there. Don't want to be super insane. Let's do one. Science three, subdivision mode. Super cool. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and then I'm going to scale that down. And I'm going to put it at the end of this there we go and how does it work is it select the it, you like select the curve and then you select the face i think And then extrude, yeah, okay, so that's how you do it. So you go, let's undo that. So you go into face mode. Also, this is like a little bit too big for like a wire. Let's scale it down a little bit. So you select all the faces and then you shift select the curve and then press control E. And then you're like, this is all messed up. What's going on there? Um, but if you add subdivisions, look at that. Look at that, y'all. You can type in like a hundred on here. So now you have a wire kind of going through there. So that you, no one needs to know that. Um, Zach just asked. So <laughs> that's a little, bit of a, a little bit of a bonus one. I don't want you guys to be thinking about that all the time though. I, I prefer you guys to be focusing on uh, cubes and making them into cool books and gamer chairs and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. Um, last three minutes of class, y'all. Any other requests before I leave? I only asked because in the final, I spent like three hours making one nice wire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we've been there. We've been there, Zach. We, I, I know how, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. But yeah, usually there is like a faster way to do something in Maya than than usual, but I want you guys just focusing on good old extrude, multi-cut, and target weld. We'll get into the other tools uh, further into the class, but, but yeah, that's all you need to worry about for now. All right. Well, I haven't seen any other, uh, oh, I'm seeing some applause. Uh, interesting, oh, oh, dang. Oh, there's people off screen too. I uh, didn't realize there was an audience going on here. Um, but yeah, awesome stuff, y'all. Again, hit me up on Discord if something's going super wrong. Um, would I have to be this lecture recorded and posted somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to, um, I was recording to my computer. So afterwards, I'm going to upload it to YouTube and then it should be done processing tonight or tomorrow. Uh, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it y'all. Uh, thanks for, thanks for attending this class. We're going to do some, we're going to do some very dope stuff. Um, I look forward to seeing what y'all make, you know? Um, yeah. See you guys, see you guys on campus next week. That'll be awesome. Very dope. Very dope. All right. See y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Incredible. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Professor, I was wondering if I could talk to you. Yeah, quick absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually on the wait list for this class right now. Oh, and really? I was, uh, yeah, I was wondering if it was possible if I could join it. Yeah, I mean, I'm down. I, I don't, I don't have direct control over that though. You need to talk to. Um, I think it's advising. Is that advising handles that? Because they don't give me the ad codes for that. Uh, but yeah, okay. if you like, send me an email, and then. I will in the email re reply and be like, yes, I approve this. Um, and then you'll be able to add 
you'll you'll be able to forward that email to the, the admissions office and stuff and then they'll be then, okay. then they give me that then they send me like another email afterwards um but okay. yeah so, so email, send, email you first email me then... first yeah that way we have like the paper trail of me being like yes approved like in text okay. rather than like oh the professor said that i can do this you know so yeah yeah okay very dope very dope thank you so much <laughs> yeah no problem um i have a quick question as well yeah what's up um for the environment for the homework, is it okay if I model like my house that's in my sophomore thesis instead of doing like a room? Oh, dude, perhaps? yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. For I just sure. wanted to ask if that was okay before sending an email because I thought it would just be easier asking here than sending one. So. Oh no, yeah, yeah, no. Please contact me now because I don't, I don't check my school email like every day, you know, because I have. Okay, like, sounds good. Sounds I got good. Other, okay. Other stuff going on, but uh, but yeah, no, that's completely fine, dude. If you wanna. If you want to do some stuff that could be in your in your thesis, then then absolutely. Okay, sounds good. And that was my only question. So thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Nice. Awesome. Have a good rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.